here we are back at it again for another simple job so i just figured we'd get started i've already just drained the cooling system real real quick here so see here is where your cooling reservoir sets just give it a lift and pull it out and you will have the hose that runs along here you can pull that off and then remove it from here uh i what i do is i put the I just put the hose back inside of the cap so that it doesn't uh, leak all over the place when it falls out. So everything in the reservoir stays. Second, drain pan. You got a little drain cock right there. Come on, man. Can I get a little focus? Come on, can I get a little focus? No focus today, guys. No focus. So anyhow, right down here. There's your drain cock, loosen it up, let the water drain. It's got a valve that comes out the bottom right into your drain. Very simply, this is how we're going to start. I've already disconnected the plug wires. They are all, the firing order is numbered here on the coil. Our plug wires were also numbered, no problems. So that is an easy way to know where you're going once you put it back together. So it's nothing that we have to mark. So next, air box, eight millimeter. Eight millimeters on the intake manifold. Um, I'm sorry, that's on the lower intake, I believe. Eight millimeters. No, no, that's that's ten down there. So, ten mils all the way across top and bottom intake manifold, coil, and the plate. That'll come off as well, um, and then that'll get us down to the exhaust manifold. So for now, we're going to start with those couple of things: air box, upper intake, ignition coil. All right, this is the eights that I was talking about here. These two eights, that 13 in the back that holds down the ETR tube so that those get pulled, or that does get pulled back out of the way and off of the head. All right, those are done. So air box out, upper intake off, very simple. After you take off this EGR tube, this uh, upper hose, um, and one plug in the throttle body, then uh, what you do is I disconnect. You don't have to disconnect the uh, the fuel line if you don't want, but I didn't want to disturb the uh, injectors or any of the seals or anything like that. So what I did is I just, it has its own quick disconnect, which you literally, you pull the hose down on, press the quick disconnect in on the edges, and then you can pop it right off. It just has to get past this little flare. So once you've done that, just set it back here to the back. There will be fuel pressure. It did fire out quite a bit of fuel out of here. So um, as long as you don't have anybody working with you, you don't have to unhook the battery. But, you know, OSHA guidelines probably state that you should unhook the electrical system before uh, unhooking the fuel system because, you know. All right, 13 millimeter here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the 10 millimeters out of the upper intake, or the lower intake rather. Um, and then we should be able to give her a try, but that's going to be after getting this last bracket off over here. So take that bracket off, take all the 10 millimeter bolts out for the lower intake, and we'll get that lower intake manifold up and out. All right, there's that. And we are going, after pulling the upper intake off, it just comes off real easy. It's not sealed down. Uh, you don't even have to push on it. Uh, I literally just lifted it off without any hesitation or any any uh stick so here we go eight millimeter bolts on the valve covers i'm going to go ahead and do knock both those out real quick and then uh we'll be on to the next piece which is going to be your nasty 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 exhaust manifolds which are always going to have rusty damn bolts the whole way across always so I'm actually going to go ahead and spray those now so that by the time I'm done with the valve covers, those have already soaked in a little bit. But uh, good chances that we're going to snap some of them. All right, front manifold is off. The valley uh, windage tray is off as well. Pull that off. That is a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. And then uh, next I'm going to pull out the 15s, I believe it is. 15 millimeters. Millimeter paters. 15s, yes. 15s for the head bolts and uh pull this front head and then i'm going to move on to the back and do the manifold in the in the back head all right there it is both heads are off off to the machine shop okay so i already i already went ahead and put that back head on um so 
that your next step is actually making sure that all your surfaces are clean uh, before reassembly. Um, I did also forget to mention that when you undo your heads, you will have to pull out your push rods. So those will come out and sit to the side. I always try and make sure that they are put back in the same um, direction that they came out of. Up is up and down is down, and each cylinder has the same push rod that came out of it. Then uh, after that, and everything's clean and everything, you can put your gasket down. Um, because you don't have to take the rocker arms off, the uh, obviously your lifters will be up in each dip, or up or down in, in whichever position it is on the crank. Um, so first thing you'll do is you'll run down the top and two bolts um, with your uh, quarter inch ratchet, take it down or an electric ratchet nice and easy until it meets. Uh, your torque sequence is gonna be 45 foot pounds. Then you go back and uh, check them at 65 foot pounds and then check them again at 65 foot pounds to make sure that they're all done and then go back and do a 90 degree turn on each bolt. So obviously you start from the middle and work your way out. So we went from the top to the bottom then we move back over here to the top and the bottom. And then we move back out here and I did the bottom and the top. And then moved out here and did the bottom or the top and the bottom. So you do that in that sequence, 45, 65, 65, and then 90 degrees. So now I will go ahead and do all that for you here. <clears throat> so you can see everything going back. It's just a little more of a pain in the butt with that one. I also, while I have the valve cover and everything off, went ahead and replaced the spark plugs back there. That's the easiest time to do that and I need a new glove. So, each step, first one here is, I made sure that my dowel pins were out of my head. This one over here was stuck in the head, so I pulled it out of the head, put it in the block. It helps to hold your gasket in so that you don't have it slipping out of the way while you're trying to lower your head down on. Uh, make sure your surface is on the bottom of the head, the top of the block, and the intake side are all clean, and then uh, you're able to start reassembling. One more quick little thing here. Your head gaskets matter. They are marked L and R, okay? For this vehicle, basically you wanna look at it as if this engine was sitting in the car with a rear wheel drive. So your transmission's on this side, so you're gonna imagine like your transmission's in the back, okay? The right side of your vehicle is the passenger side always, and the left side is your driver's side. So if you turn this engine facing to the transmission's in the back, and the crank is in the front, that is your right side head, and that is your left side head. Passenger and driver, even though this is a front wheel drive and the engine is turned sideways. So, as you can see, I got the L in the front facing up, and uh, that will, it will always be setting down on the block so that you can read the letter the way it's supposed to be read. So the R is obviously over here on this corner facing up. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and set these down into place, one at a time. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set these down into place first where they need to be, and then uh, Sorry, let's go ahead and set it on that side. So then they're all gonna be sitting down onto the lifters where they belong. Okay. And then the last one. All right, they're all sitting on the hydraulic lifters. So basically, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put in this head bolt and draw it down till it's snug. And this head bolt down here and draw it down till it's snug. And that'll give you the right, uh, it'll give you enough clearance so that you can uh, torque your head bolts down. But the first things first here is I'm gonna start them without drawing them down. And I'll lift up on the head just a little bit to get all of the, uh, push rods underneath the rocker rods. We just want them started just so that we can get the uh, so that we can lift the head
good. They're all in. Now it's time for the torque. All right, here's your uh, torquing sequence. 45 degrees, or 45 foot-pounds. Move your way down the bottom one here. 45 foot-pounds. top middle bolt and we're going to work our way out so we went down to our bottom bolt in the middle then out to the left did that one then straight up and did the middle bolt then out to the outside and did the, that one and then the bottom and then out to the bottom on the left side and then the one in the middle so that's the sequence that we did so i did 45 foot pounds now i'm moving up to 65 just a plain old plain jane torque wrench here there's 50, there's 60, and there is 65. Are you talking to yourself? Yes, I am. Unreal. <laughs> you know they made counselors for that, right? They threw me out of counseling. For talking to yourself? Uh, making um, rude gestures to my therapist. Your therapist? My therapist. Oh, what was your rude gesture? Can I ask? Wait, he's looking at me, people. He's making me nervous. Uh, not a whole lot of room in here to get what you need done. Somebody unplug my heat. Now I'm going to freeze to death. Okay. I tripped. I almost fell for you. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Okay, 65, 65, it's that, it's dead. yep, that air compressor's had it, Start looking on the marketplace. we got one, we just got to hook it up, 65, all right. Now that we're all done doing 65 all the way around, we're gonna do it again. Just to be sure that everything went down properly. <laughs> you wish! Take her down. 
90 degrees. Don't be alarm people, he's back. 90 degrees. <laughs> it's a little difficult to get that 90 in when you got such little space. So if you don't have enough space and you want to do 45 and 45, you can do it. As long as you know where you're going. 90. There's my 90. Take it from 12 o'clock all the way down to 3 o'clock. And that is your 90 degrees. Okay. Down to this one. I'm going to lay your intake back on this box over here. All right, buddy. Sorry, I couldn't clean it up, but I did put a scraper right there for you to scrape. Oh, yeah, because that's what I'll do see when it? I'm done here. Right there, see it? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. See it, see it. 45. And then keep going. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the very next thing that we do after we went through and did our 90 degree angles on our head bolts is we are going to go ahead and uh, lay our in, um, lower intake manifold gasket. You're going to put a generous amount of RTV here so that you don't get any leak. Because it will leak there, my friends. Definitely. So both sides left and right or front and back of the motor whichever however you're going to describe it and uh, once you get that into place with the rtv then you can go ahead and lower in your intake manifold all right heads and exhaust are on minus the uh top exhaust bolt on both sides to hold the uh the exhaust to the manifolds i'll get those done here both heads are bolted down Exhausts are bolted down, new uh, spark plugs in front and back. And uh, now it's time to do that, uh, that lower intake manifold gasket slash valley pan or whatever you call it. Some people call it a splash shield. So, Nick. Shit. Now, this is uh, one thing I definitely do here when you're getting ready to put your RTV down is I will come up at least halfway up here on the head so that uh, you don't have any splash up there as well. So literally I'm going to put some RTV the whole way down around here and then up onto this side. Make sure that you, all your surfaces are clear of oil and debris. And then uh, that's what you do. You just move on here. I'm just going to go ahead and put a nice little, nice little bead. Literally just drops right down in like this. Just like that. A couple of 10 millimeter bolts. And bang, bang. this bad boy on the place uh, obviously I put in a new valve cover gasket <sighs> these are all eight millimeters now they all have uh, metal inserts in there are torque specs for valve covers but uh, the inserts are in there so that you can't over torque them so just go in there and get your eight millimeter and uh, go ahead and smack them all down. I was gonna do the intake first, but it's just not gonna work that way. Yeah. Go ahead and put this one back into place.
fill in the creases and crevices. And I cannot tell a lie. tube is installed get that 13 tightened up in the back that holds that in place done Sorry, I lied. Five, one, three. Okay, six. Number four. And number two. we can find the holes all right that's officially the last piece right there and uh yeah it's all together now i just gotta start it but i'm gonna let somebody else do that because you know then it's their fault when it breaks all right there it is done and running uh i did do a quick oil change uh when i topped off the antifreeze also had a little bit of an issue with the back exhaust bolt and the exact a gasket fell out and I didn't even realize it was gone so when I started it up it was a little noisy but uh, everything is up and running it's getting up to temperature now and uh, that's it if you have any questions leave them in the comments <laughs>